Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Anchor Team. Uh, we are blessed to have with us Father James Altman. And uh, Father always said, I'm going to embarrass him a second here. This man's schedule is inhuman. Uh, and whenever he has time, he makes time for uh, anyone to serve Christ. And it's not, a, it's not an overstate, but Father, thanks for being here. You're welcome. Uh, it's just a, it's, it's always a privilege, Jim, you know this. And uh, the, I wish there were more workers in the vineyard. But even Jesus said, oh, the laborers are few, so we seem to work really hard. <laughs> okay. Well, that certainly goes for you. I, I have an idea of what your schedule is like. So, uh, well, anyway, Father, would you uh, uh, lead us in an opening prayer? All right. All right. In nomine Patris, Aphelia, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Heavenly Father, I ask you to send your spirit upon us now, the spirit of knowledge and wisdom and truth. And we have the courage to be a light of Christ in this ever darkening world. Let us lead other souls to you in all that we say and do. And we ask for this grace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, thanks, Father. Uh, yes. So, you know, always good, always good to call upon the Trinity. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. Yes, it is. But, you know, I, uh, you are a uh, personal hero of mine. And I know that's embarrassing, but I'm saying it anyway. <laughs> it's funny. I go, you know, get Father Altman on. I'm going, yeah, Father, this isn't going to be a hard hitting, tough question thing because, like, I'm on your side, so yeah, I know. Uh, I know. <laughs> so forget, forget any uh, penetrating questions. Yeah, um, yeah, it's funny. Um, as I've often related to you, uh, first introduced you sitting on a couch with a bunch of guys smoking cigars, ignoring COVID, and this guy, <laughs> this guy comes. We're watching YouTube. This guy comes across the TV. It was you, and then towards started out religious with that famous video, and midway through, you know, saying great stuff. Midway through, talked about saying things we've been saying for years finally thought about it three guys jumped off the couch and said who is this guy and then, then i told them later i go i, met, I actually met him yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh yeah so uh if i could father uh, yes. i talked about this earlier i was going to start out with and i think uh, i think the folks at home uh, will really appreciate this because uh, i got a story for you yes and yeah and uh the story uh, and i ran it by father and michael hitchborn it um, it really proves uh, our faith, and you know if you if you look around and you know sometimes God gives you the grace to see things, and and I think this is one of those stories. Yeah, you know. So um, I uh, I go to a cigar bar and I and I struck up a friendship with this uh, woman who worked there uh, who was originally from Poland. You know, and I says and I had asked her, you know, like. Or, uh, oh, wow, you're Poland. I go, if I'm not mistaken, that's probably the last Catholic country left on the planet because my people from Ireland uh, are no longer Catholic. And, and oh. yeah, and, and I thought, I thought, you know, well, you know, once that fell, I just couldn't help but think of, I'm 100% Irish, you know, like my grandparents yeah. from there. And when that fell, I went, oh, my God, I wonder what my grandparents would say. I mean, oh. just so, so I, I often many times thought of Poland as the last, you know, the last holdout. Yeah. And uh, so, Hungary's doing a good job too. Yeah. Thank you. So, You're yeah. great, for me, Father. Actually, that's but, a really good one. But that's um, about it. You know, yeah, that, that's about Russia's it. Russia's doing a better job than any France, Germany, or Ireland. Russia's doing a better job. Imagine that. <laughs> actually. You're 100 right. Russia is doing a better job. <laughs> it's like can you imagine we would say that one day. Yeah, Russia's doing yeah, a better yeah. job in never uh, really did. Yeah. With, with with the Orthodox, uh, you know, Eastern Orthodox as opposed to Catholic, they're more Catholic than Catholics at this yeah, point. Yeah, right, right. So, so I, I talked to this woman, and I, I would ask her, I go, well, you know, wow, you're from Poland. I go, you know, you'd be Catholic. And she dismissed it, you know, like, I'm like, ah, really? And, and, and I, I gave the usual argument. So I go, like, you know, you have to separate uh, the deposit of faith and the rich intellectual and theological history from the man, yeah. right? You know, listen, if you're Satan, you're going after the uh, you're going after the big uh, the big dog, and, and this makes perfect sense. And you know, they 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 you know they've held them they've held them back for for many many years. But it, you know, in my view, it started probably right around the turn of the century, and, and the Vatican II was a coming out party. <laughs> That's my take on that. Yeah, so, right. So, but it was one of those things. She was a very nice woman, and. Uh, Anyway, you know, a little bit of friendship. And, you know, we, we would talk all the time. But, uh, yeah, I'd see her when I was in there. And um, anyway, I got a call from her. I didn't know her. I hadn't spoken to her in months. Got in back there. And she says, is there any way I can meet you? And I said, well, that's kind of odd. Sure. So, but I, had, I sensed it was important. Because uh, it's not like we met outside of the uh, the bar, you know. And uh, I said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. And so 
I, uh, you know, it just so happened, again, Providence, uh, just so happened I was driving through, I moved away from that area and I was driving through that area at the time she wanted to meet, which yeah. I cannot. So I, I speak to her and then, you know, um, I think she's in her mid forties. So she starts talking about this conversation about, uh, you know, something that was, uh, you know, like really not that important. And I'm like, why am I here? You know, kind of one yeah. of those deals. And she sort of saw that I was really <laughs> not interested <laughs> looking at my watch. <laughs> okay. So then it happened. And then she, uh, she said to me, you know, I've always trusted you. I, I got to tell you something. And I go, oh boy, this is going to be bad. And she goes, something happened to me the other night. And I said, okay, <clears throat> go ahead. I'm all yours. Yeah. And she goes, I was in bed and uh, in my room and I sensed that there was a presence there and the presence was demonic and diabolical and evil. Yeah. And I also sensed the presence was female and that it wanted to kill me and it was malignant and, 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 and malevolent and rather malevolent. And uh, so uh, now you got my attention after 10,000 hours of Father Ripperger, you know, I'm like, OK, yeah. so. Then I sensed, then she said something really got me and said, and then and, and you can see it in her face. This was earnest. And think about her asking me about this, right? Yeah. And uh, the, the manifestation was on top of her and choking her. Mm -hmm. And I said, stop right there, please. Uh, I said, um, that happened, I'm going to say 3 a.m., right? Yeah. And her eyes got as big as saucers. And I go, please, hold on. I got to finish this for you. You choked out the name of Jesus and it stopped. And that's when she like just literally she stood up and said, how did you know that? And I said, well, you know, 10,000 hours of Father Ripper to pick a few things up. So um, <laughs> so so I, I, I swear it was the Holy Spirit. I go like this. Get your phone out, man. All right. I need you to really focus on what I'm telling you, because. I'm telling you this. I'm not asking your opinion. I'm not asking that we're going to debate this because I don't really have time for that. And right now you're in triage. And so it just so happened you picked the one guy in the, in the hundred mile area out of a million who actually understands this. This is what you got to do. First and foremost, you got to find a good priest and go to general confession today, if possible. OK, if not now, that's going to be a tall order because you're going to have to run one of these guys down, right? But I, I, if you can't get one, I'll get you one. But it's really, I suspect strongly that once that happens, your problems are over. But you know, and by the way, when I'm done saying this, my skill sets are finished, and and my uh, the way above my pay grade, and I can't really input any more than this. But I promise you this, I know. Okay, so I need you to, I need you to get that confession. Don't put it off. And if you're, if you, if you don't, I'm telling you, it's going to be bad, right? Get the confession. Yeah. Number two, you're going to have to become Catholic again immediately. Okay. And I mean, immediately. And if you want, I go to Latin mass and, uh, and I will, I'll go to the one by your house and I'll meet you there. If you were, you know, walk through and you get to number two, the same priest, hopefully he takes you to confession, um, will bless your house. This is imperative. Okay, and you're going to have to get everything out of that house that anything sinful, whatever, it's none of my business, but you're going to have to. And I, and I said, um, what else did I say? Uh, oh, and, um, and see if he's got any salt for you uh, and load up on the holy water. And, you have a rose, and I go, do you have a rosary bead, right? And, and do you have rosary beads? And I go, yes, somewhere. And I go, find them. <laughs> No, this is a great story, man. And so, oh no, I'm just thinking. I got you know, it didn't reach me. I've got three or four. Yeah, you know? I, bet, I bet right within. I had I had one pair on me, and um, and, and I go um, I had one pair on me, and they were the ones actually Father Heilman gave them to me. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they were they were like a third class relic. Yeah. And 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 my um my altruism only goes so far, Father. <laughs> I'm not giving those up. So I go, but uh, I, I say this. Oh, and then I said, and this is what we're going to do right now. Uh, we're going to go to my car. And in my car, I have uh, water from Lourdes. And I can't bless you, but you got to bless yourself. I have no authority of you. And now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to say the rosary. We're going to find a private place. We're going to say the rosary. And so, but she uh, uh, she did it. She did everything I said. And, and so we said the rosary. And I said, um, now. Once you get to that priest, if he's a good priest, stay in touch with him because you're really going to need, need a priest. And and, and it, there's a there's a certain point where you can't, um, you know, my 
it's going to be above my pay grade. And I really don't need to comment on this. Okay. It just so happens with my 10,000 hours of father Ripper, I had this down. So anyway, um, so I met her for mass on Sunday and I brought her a box. Right. And in the box, just stuff I had laying around. Right. Um, I had holy water. Yeah. I had salt. I had oil. I had a miraculous medal from Rue de Bach in Paris that was blessed. Nice. Yeah, I bought nice. and I had, this is great. I had a bag of these things that I bought for I honestly I think it was 15 euro or something, and there were like 200 of them. And I give yeah. them like crazy. They're, they're cheap, they're yeah. fantastic though. I had them blessed. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I gave her a candle, a blessed candle, uh, yeah. salt, yeah. all that stuff, an icon of Christ, actually a uh, Eastern Catholic icon of Christ. And uh, nice. I think that's about it. But uh, fascinating. Um, so she, I, I said, and, and really, really, you're going to have to get rid of anything in your home. And I mean anything. And and right now you're swimming upstream, man. And and, and you really have to understand one thing. Um, everything is either Christ or Satan. And yeah, until yeah. you internalize that, I mean, brushing your teeth, as mundane and, and banal as that, it it, it, it comes down to that. And, and it's this, your story, although you think maybe this is insane, your story is not uncommon. I hear, I actually hear about this a lot. Right. And I guess in your business, father, you probably hear about it a lot more than I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So fast forward. Um, that's why I thought this was an appropriate story because fast forward. Um, she did everything. I, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, she yeah. did everything. And, uh, She's now Catholic and uh, everything, the, the house, she said, um, has, for the first time, she lived there three years, for the first time, it's lighter, He's all of these things. And I was like, wow. And I just said, look, you know, th there's a tendency to forget all this stuff, uh -huh. you know, and, and uh, but it, um, I suspect in the universe, this is going on so much. This is a wake up call. Mm -hmm. So in a way, you're blessed you know, really sort of understand that. And, and you're going to have to just remember swimming upstream, you know? And, and so uh, I, 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 this happened last week, you know? So uh, I, I, I guess I talk to her every few days just now, but just a quick hello, make sure she's okay. But uh, yeah, actually she called me yesterday. She watched the movie Nefarious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? And, yeah. I said, yeah, it's pretty accurate. You know, yeah. I just said, you know, when you go through, she had a couple of questions. I go, again, you're kind of reaching above my pay grade. So, yeah. but I'll tell you what I know. So anyway, that's my story. That was a good one. Yeah. yeah. Remember in that movie, that scene where the guy goes, okay, hit me with your best shot. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. When he, goes, when he goes, you have my full permission yeah. to enter into my consciousness and being with no reservations. And I just remember, in fact, I, I yeah, I kind of watched the press. We just kind of went. Yeah. Oh, that was bad. That was really oh, bad. Oh, oh that, that was that was because, as everyone knows, you have to uh, you have to you know give your consent. Have you ever have you ever heard me talk about the life lesson of the vampire? No. Do uh, so you have just a second? I can tell you. Yeah, man, hit it. This is great. important for people because this is a theological lesson that we just discussed. So, the real vampire, our our legends, our monsters are. The exact opposite of goodness. So, uh, and the vampire, when you when you analyze the truth of the legend, not the Hollywood, they're trying to make like they had that Twilight series where they had these pretty young boys and girls, and they tried to make them look pretty, and and they tried to make them look like lovable, like we're trying to not be bad people, so we're not we're going to try to kill deer and drink their blood, not humans, and. <laughs> so, they, so Hollywood's trying to confuse, and, and they do it with it. Well, there's a little good in everyone. There's a little bad in everyone. So let's tolerate everybody, right? That's they, They've messed with the truth of the legend of the vampire. Here's the legend of the vampire. Oh, wow. uh, God, Jesus is our sign of pure love. The vampire, sign of pure evil. Jesus is the model of selflessness. The vampire is the model of selfishness. So Jesus, think about the precious blood. Jesus sacrificed himself so that we would drink his blood so that we would have eternal life. The vampire has to kill you and drink your blood so that he has immortality. It's the exact opposite. Yeah. Jesus um, said, walk in the light. Now, the vampire has to be, is a creature of the night. If he walks in the light, he dies. Um, it's exact inverse. Oh, it's exact inverse. Um, where, uh, Jesus, we're saved by the wood of the cross. You put this wooden stake through the vampire's heart. That's what kills him. You know, you pierce his heart with the stake, the wood. 
he's dead. He's gone. He's, but, but Jesus is through that, uh, through the piercing in his heart that we, that we live and, and receive his precious blood. Uh, one of the key, uh, key things that people don't get, the true vampire, the legend that we grew up with, was that a vampire cannot come in to the house unless the man of the house invites him in. And yes. So there was this movie back in the, I think in the 80s. It was called Lost Boys. Yeah. It is, it is so Catholic when you think about it, right? So here you have this head vampire guy, and he wants a family. <laughs> and so he needs a wife and children, right? Unlike the confusion that's out there today, we understood this. <laughs> as, as the vampire. So what he does is, are you talking crazy talk here? That's I like, know, oh, I I it nuts, man. Yeah. Ahead, sorry. So, uh, so he he converts through be, making the vampires a bunch of teenage boys. That's why they're the lost boys, right? Yeah. But he knows, and he says it at the end that boys need a mother. So now he's trying to seek out a woman who can be the mother, right? And and then he's this woman. Her name is Diane Weist, I think, in real life. Uh, she's she's moved back from, I think it was like Phoenix with her two teenage boys because she got a divorce. And now she's living back in this New Jersey coastal town and at her dad's house. And anyway, the older of the two boys, who's like, and he seems like maybe 17, 18, he's being lured into becoming a vampire. And the reason is because the, the mother went to work in the head vampire's DVD or his VHS tape. That's how, that's how old this show is. Uh, and he takes a shine to her. He takes a liking to her and he wants her to be the lost boy's mother, but he knows he's not going to be able to convince her just once she finds out he's a vampire, you know, all bets are off unless he co-ops his son and then the mother, right. will come in. So he decides he's going to take her on a date. So at least she gets familiar with him. So he comes over to the house and uh, the son who's halfway converted because he drank blood without realizing it, uh, he he answers the door. He's all mad. Now, she's going to go out to dinner with this head vampire, not realizing who he is. So uh, he's all mad. He answers the door and the head vampire is there and he says, Mom, your date's here. And she hollers from the kitchen. Hey, come on in. I'm almost ready. And he says, and, and watch for this scene in the movie because it is so perfect for the legend of the vampire. He says, oh, no. I never come in unless the man of the house invites me in. Well, the man of the house was her oldest son. Yes. So he gets all, he's still cranky, right? He's just in a bad mood. He says, come on in. <laughs> and, he, and the vampire comes in. And, and from that point forward, it's a quick slide into uh, the, the final scene where some of the teenage boys get, the vampires get killed. And like one gets doused in holy water and bubbles up and, one gets shot, pushed back on a rack of uh, deer antlers, and that's what kills him. Yeah, uh, that this movie came out in, the, in like the late eighties, right? Eighties, <laughs> yeah, it's one of those eighties. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Which is a great and, movie. Uh, Go ahead, keep going. So that then the head vampire once the secret's out, and uh, she realizes that her son is about to become a vampire. The head vampire he looks really creepy at this point. And he holds out his hand. I think her name was Lucy. Come, Lucy. And she starts to reach out to grab him. At that exact moment, just before the fell deed is done, uh, the grandfather comes in with his tractor and out flies a fence post and pins the vampire, the head vampire, in the chest. And, he, and up he goes, I think, up the chimney and whatever. And the, vamp the, the grandpa says this. That's a problem with whatever town it is. There's just too damn many vampires. <laughs> but you see, <laughs> the, key, the key is the vampire cannot come in unless you invite him in. And what people need to understand, like this woman needs to understand, the the, the bad the evil doesn't come in unless you let him in. And I'll tell That's you right. what, remember That's that right. song by Frank Zappa about the, the ooze coming out of your TV set or something, uh, slime coming out of your TV set. We, we invite him in in so many ways, through the internet, through the TV, through uh, our careless lack of prayer, through removing religious objects. There's a reason why religious objects are around your house. They are to remind you of what your daily duty is, but also to, to let Satan know and his minions, hey, you're not welcome here. That's right. So, and the, and the problem is once the vampire gets in, like any bad habit, 
very hard to get him out. So it's a pound of cure once you let him in. The, and, yeah, I, I, you know, this that that story was perfect because it, it really underlines whether it be this woman or, or anybody else. The reality is from from again from you need to understand this stuff first of all. But you really do. This is not about that's why, you know, if you ever meet a priest that, that doesn't believe in the devil, you don't want to be around that priest. I mean, right. he's that, a that, yeah, he's, he's a fake. He, he's a, he's there's a, no devil. There's no Jesus. There's no reason. If there's no sin, there's no need for a savior. He's that's a right. fraud. That, you know, Bergoglio has said, oh, nobody really goes to hell. They just go poof into nothingness when they die. Right. That, that guy's not Catholic. He's a fraud. That the you're not overstating that those children hell. Yeah, I mean you're not overstating that. Father. I, I don't know how else you can reach any other conclusion. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like you. Oh, we talked about this once, man. Um, in his office, the creepy picture of Judas, I right? Know. Right. There's a picture and a statue, both. Yeah, and, and, and Judas is like I don't know some creepy half naked guy, and um, it's such. Oh, what happened? Cameras, you hit your camera and we're looking at your ceiling. Just oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, man. Oh. <laughs> I was getting excited there. <laughs> yeah, I, right there. I, my hands go wild. Yeah, just, yeah, was like it's not the first time I've done that either. Okay, sorry. Oh yeah. So it's um it's such a uh whoops, there we go. Thank God this broke. But um it's such an obvious case of psychological transference because if you can if you can, what's the word? Recondition that guy, right? Oh, yeah. Then, then we're we're all off the hook. I mean, look. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong, Father. Uh, this is pretty clear from Scripture. <laughs> I can't quote chapter and verse, but he's in hell. Yeah, he he's very much in hell. Remember, in the gospel, it says Satan entered Judas. Right. Yeah. When he got up from the table, Satan entered him. Nowhere does it say he left him. And now, and watch. Through all the Gospels, everywhere Jesus went. Remember, this is before baptism when you can put on the armor of God. You know, Ephesians 6, 11. Induit vos armaturum Dei. Put on the armor of God to protect yourselves against the insidious diaboli, the insidious snares of the devil. They didn't have that back then. So that's why everywhere Jesus went, he, he was driving out demons. But he also warned, you better put something good back in or that guy's coming back with some of his friends and you're going to be worse off than you were before. Yeah. So you realize that so many people these days are not being baptized. And during the 70s, 80s, 90s, they pretend, they pretend they, they pretended they were baptizing, but they weren't when they were saying stupid things like, we baptize you, this community, <laughs> right? Or or they would say, we baptize you, or I baptize you in the name of the creator, the redeemer, and the sanctifier. I think that's it. Yeah. So those were false. So a lot of people walking around today who aren't baptized and are susceptible then because they don't have the armor of God to Satan coming in. Um, right. Yeah. Right. I, you know, um, stop me if I'm wrong on this, but there's another thing, and I think you're going to know about this, but I think this is very, very relevant to our discussion. There, uh, in the Dewey Reams Bible, and in fact, in, in, in most all Bibles, including Protestant King James Version, prior to like 1975, I want to say Mark chapter 9, verse 29. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this kind of demon can only be removed by prayer and, and fasting. fasting. Right. Exactly. Yes. And I did a little research. I, as a matter of fact, a lot of your homilies, dear people, I research. <laughs> <laughs> I love when you say that, man, because I go, get your notepad out. This is real. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I, I go, I can't be right. And it, it happens that um, I have my mother's Dewey Reams Bible from St. Helena's School in Bronx, New York, from, <laughs> uh, I want to say, like, literally 1942 through World War II, right? Yeah. And I keep it in this bag, whatever, and I'm like, I, I got that. I have that Bible. And sure enough, I took that out, and I took the Catholic Bible out. Yeah. And I looked it up, and then I went back and I looked at the King James Version, the older one and the new one, and it was true. So I ask you, obvious question. That's a big difference. Okay. Yeah. Now, that is a monstrous difference. Yeah. One implies mortification. One of you like that self-denial, right? Fasting. And the other one is just, and um, are you, you're familiar with this, right? I think LifeSite yeah. News talked about this a little bit. You are familiar with this, right, Father? The idea that they took out the fasting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They took it, right, right. 
an absolute requirement for the toughest stuff. Yes. Yeah. For an absolute requirement. And so now I, I guess I'm pointing this out because now all of a sudden we have an institutional trend within Catholicism yeah. uh, to remove uh, the reality of spiritual warfare. Right. Yet simultaneously, every archdiocese in the country is now getting an exorcist. Right. Or, or has one because that wasn't always the case. Uh -huh. Right. Uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. That wasn't always the case. And they're, they're always supposed to. But, you know, the losers that were in the hierarchy just didn't bother. But <laughs> yeah. why would you, why, listen, here's the thing. People who uh, I, it's um, was it. I just was researching this here and going over it in the last couple of days, but it was uh, people who want well, good will walk to, in the light, but the bad guys, the evil ones, the evil doers won't walk in the light. They prefer to be in darkness, right? Yeah. And so um, the when you have a hierarchy that prefers darkness, they don't want to have their conscience pricked by the by admitting the darkness by admitting the evil which is what mm -hmm. an exorcist would do because an exorcist is one that drives out evil drives out the demons yes so it's it's like playing a little game of uh, pretend it isn't real and therefore it's not which yes. is a really stupid game to play uh particularly yeah. in this area yes yeah so uh, that that would be why it would be my hypothesis I, I think it's a good one. And, and correct me if I'm wrong again, Father Roman, but um, if I'm not mistaken, by virtue of the office of bishop, you are the exorcist. Yeah, well, you are the chief exorcist. But yeah. They typically hand it off to right. somebody who gets a lot of training. Listen, in seminary, they, and I thank God for this, they were very cautious and cautioned us. You don't mess with that. If you're not the one chosen by the bishop as his representative to be the exorcist, you don't, you don't mess with that. You go to the exorcist. Yes, because because the dark side is very legalistic. Yes, yes, that's exactly right. And we can't pretend that's not true because it is. Right, right, and 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 so to add to that, God, I'm really enjoying this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> so this is really good. But we, you started out with your one story, and we haven't gotten to the yeah. three or four other things. We I say I say we stay on this for a little bit if you yeah, don't want to go. Because I, I think I think the folks at home would appreciate this, but. Yeah. They're, uh, from what I understand, they're extremely legalistic. Yeah. So back to your original point about the lost boys, right? Yeah. The job of the exorcist is to determine how you got there, how that got there, how that malevolent spirit got there. Yeah. And it got there through your will somehow. Yes. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I'm telling you, man, now it's like, you know, last week I was like, man, I wasn't wasting time watching all this stuff. Yeah. So, um, but so... As I and, and and look, and there's another inexplicable thing that if you wouldn't mind commenting on, there's an interesting trend happening. I've noticed that um, uh, their bishops are giving permission and almost encouraging many exorcists to go out and tell their story. And uh, I'll cite uh, as evidence uh, Monsignor Stephen Rossetti, uh, Father Carlos Martin, uh, Father Lombardi, I think from Indianapolis. I think the Lombardi, is that his name? Uh, there's obviously Father Ripperger, this fa a new guy I saw being interviewed by um, Father, uh, excuse me, Michael Knowles, uh, Father Dan Rehill out of Nashville, by the way, who's from New York City, was from Wall Street, and his father was a fireman, by the way. So just doing my research, very much like my Irish family. But um, so I, I, I think I, I always found, and, and I can't, I can't understand, like on the one hand, it seems to me, uh, you know, these men have not acted the best, but is, is there hope in that movement? In, in other words, saying, Father, do you think that, that this is a positive trend or what's your take? Do you know, I know who the exorcist is in my diocese, but not because I asked, hey, who's our exorcist? <laughs> right. um, you, when you're when you're when you're involved in people's lives and, and, sure and they are when you're a priest people will come up to you and say things like that woman was saying to you uh oh my tv went off are you there yeah i'm here okay okay my just whole screen just went blank isn't that oh sense? you're uh, i can see you perfectly yeah okay all right my whole screens just went blank that's weird uh anyway uh 
It's not weird. Yeah. So this happens every time this subject comes up. But sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Strange things are afoot. So, uh, so you come to find out who that person is. Most people and perhaps most priests don't even know. Here, as an example, uh, a dear friend of mine, holy man, holy man, uh, was somebody brought this younger woman to him in the church. That's where he, he met her uh, and this other person. Because when the suggestion is that this person might be possessed, that the place you want to be is in a church. Yeah. Holy Eucharist right there. Right. And they don't do it in a house with no lights. Right. Three in the morning with a thunderstorm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, so he meets her in the church and he's sitting in one pew and she's sitting in the pew behind him. And all of a sudden, she levitates and bends. You know how like your your hand bends this way, right? That's normal. Yeah. But if you tried to go like this way, that would not be normal. Yeah. Same for our back. We bend over at the waist. We don't bend backwards unless you're a gymnast, I guess. This this woman levitated and bent in the wrong direction backwards, so curving that he could not see her face on the pew behind her. That's how. So he knew, oh, I'm dealing with something very real. <laughs> Here. This isn't psychological. <laughs> yeah, right. So he went to the bishop. I won't tell you what diocese. He went to the bishop and said, Bishop, this is what happened. I need to know who the exorcist is. And the bishop said to him, well, we don't have one, so I guess it's going to have to be you. <laughs> well, oh, great. This is not OJT kind of material here. Uh, so, but he went and he did uh, the homework and the practice, the, teaching and learning and and to become then the exorcist for the diocese but let me tell you folks it's very real and it's oh. more prevalent in our day uh and you'll know who they are here's here's an example so i used to like fleetwood mac remember fleetwood mac yeah 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 uh, nice rumors man. rumors yeah, right and and when i was a younger man i used to think uh stevie nicks was very attractive if you like that kind of thing, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> but she always did this wispy gypsy yeah. looking. Stuff. Yeah, I agree. I, I, do now, too. As, I, I guess now the symbolism was not for gypsies. It's uh, awful. Not for gypsies, but because of her uh, openness to inviting in evil. And so yeah. I recently heard her say, I'm, I was so disappointed. She said that she had had an abortion. She had murdered the baby in her womb. That's not the word she used. She used the word abortion, right? Yeah. Uh, and she said, and, I, and I am glad I did, because if I hadn't done that, there would have been no Fleetwood Mac. So look, she took the scales, the balance. Yep. And she said, kill a baby, Fleetwood Mac. And she chose Fleetwood Mac over the life of a child. Yep. And, and ever since then, I mean, I just can't even listen to the music anymore. It just turns my stomach. You, some things you can't forget. And if, yeah. you, if you thought entertaining me was more important than you murdering the baby in your womb. Sorry, that is that's a that's like a deal breaker. Yeah, yeah yes, it is. And that um, I wasn't aware of that. that. Somebody, yeah, you know, the exorcist said that every time a baby is murdered in the womb, it's opening a portal to more demons. So if we're wondering why there's so many demons, do you remember in the movie? Right, yeah, of course, right. Remember? That was I wasn't scared, but I was sure creeped out. When he goes five, four, three, and then he just rejoices, right? Yeah, and and it's because the portal was open. So uh, people that don't... was for those of you who haven't seen the movie, it's not like even we're giving a lot away, but um, basic because it's it's really important you guys get this. If you haven't seen it, you're exactly right. And he even said, Father All, if I'm not mistaken, this is our sacrament. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and, and he and and when that was to me the most powerful part of the movie because the the abortion, the murder was happening at that exact moment. Yeah. And because he knew and he had yeah. the angelic ability. In orgasmic ecstasy, if I can say yes, that in orgasmic yeah. ecstasy. Yeah. And um and I he counted down and then when he was done, the culmination of that, and yeah. and you know, I, I just kind of like and everyone was like Oh man, in the room I was with, they were like, "Wow, was that powerful?" Right. You know, for anyone who hasn't seen *Nefarious*, um, this is not—it is in no way, shape, or form anything like 
the Exorcist, uh, the that original. It's not that. at all what I expected. It to be. No, and it's it's very cerebral, and it's I would say intellectually accurate. Yeah, I would say that was the the thing that really struck me about the movie. Uh, I came come to find out that I believe uh, Father Carlos Martin was the uh, consultant on that. Okay, He's one of those, the Exorcist files, and uh, his services were needed during filming of the movie. Oh, did you, did you hear all the calamities? Yes. Like within a week's time, what were there, nine car wrecks for no yeah. good reason? Nine car wrecks, and, and uh, he had experienced preternatural events, uh, you know, things that, you know, he's talked yeah. about on his on his show when they were doing that movie. And, um, you know, again, folks, I have friends of mine, okay, and, and I debate with them all the time, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get them on our side. I just enjoy I, One of these days, man, or God's going to do it. I'm going to help but, um, you know, they've literally said to me, all of that stuff, all of it can be explained, right? It, 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 and here's the explanation. There's a universal a universal bank of knowledge and consciousness out there. And these people have, but, but here's my response to that. Yeah. Why the malevolence? Right. Then I, I okay, I'll, I'll grant you for the sake of argument that true. Why pure evil? Right. Because that's going to, in your carefully constructed man-made systems, yeah. that throws a wrench into it. Yeah. You know? Um, and so I'll take all of it. The fact that they speak various languages that they couldn't possibly have studied. Okay, great. I'm on board. Great. I'll give you that for one moment. Then uh, wh why do they wish everyone dead? Why the evil? You know? I mean, and that's, uh, that kind of a problem? That, that doesn't, fit, that I mean, doesn't fit the New World Order narrative. <laughs> But that, uh, so you would strongly recommend that movie, right, Father? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I, I found it. Yeah, and there's another part to this too, you know. And again, you know, there's some people. Uh, it's 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 important to know about this, right? But it's not important to be overly obsessed with it. I, I think that's a fair statement. But you know, you have to look at these things because I think, in a way, um, they're the universe is binary. The Christian narrative, without sin, we don't need Christ, all of this stuff, without evil. But I even think of the Passion of the Christ when they film that. From what I understand, Jim Caviezel got whacked by lightning, dislocated his shoulder. I mean, oh, yeah. these things are not, uh, you know, these things are not, um, I'm sorry, that's not, I don't see that as coincidence. Um, I, I think that, you know, it happened to us earlier, your screen went out. Every time this subject comes up, right, I, I, I'm... Believe it, don't believe it. I, 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 I don't really particularly feel like defending it. I promise you, there's a problem. Yeah. There is a technological lift. I keep holy water around, binding prayers, and usually that does it. But usually, you know, you know, because we have a thought. This is a great theological point, right? Mm -hmm. Binding prayers for the laity, for those of you who are keeping score at home. All right. The reason <laughs> you don't go digging into the prayers of a priest. But there are certain prayers called binding prayers of late because, again, going back to that theme of authority, right? And and I actually, by the grace of God, have authority over this laptop. Mm -hmm. I have authority over my finances. God gave them to me. Yeah. You know, and so, so it, you know, if you're messing with it, uh, make sure you're in a state of grace and then, you know, memorize your binding prayer. Yeah. You know? And this is not magic. Right. None of this stuff works unless, yeah. you, know, you know, it's all based on but Christ, even the binding prayer. Look, and this is, uh, you know, again, if you've got my hours and I'm out of time watching these things, but, um, you know, guys who get into trouble, and this is where, you know, your, your basic Protestants and your new age people forget it. I mean, you might as well just like put a target on your back <laughs> and go send me out into the trenches of fire. We're about to get blown up. Yeah. All authority comes from Jesus Christ because of that structure, very much like the father in a home can right. bless his wife and children. Right. Because, again, that hierarchical structure, yes. the mother can bless. But, you know, you got a Protestant praying over me. No. <laughs> no offense. I appreciate the sentiment. How do you pray? You know, you want to pray with me? Great. That's great. But I uh, but praying over me. No, you have no authority over me. And it's not a small point. Yeah. You know, very legalistic. You yeah. know, so, right. so. So, you know, keep your and, and your story back to uh, your friend in the diocese unnamed. You know, yeah. right. I believe that priest was a friend of yours. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think I speak for a lot of people. I, I could go without seeing that. <laughs> I know. Listen, no, that it's just it, 
something like, like they said in seminary if you want to be a bishop there's something wrong with your head right yeah if you are interested in in that kind of activity you you better you're something wrong with your head you it's not something that you seek out or uh like a hobby <laughs> no no you listen you got enough to deal with in your life you don't have to go looking for more of that uh, yeah yeah i i um correct me if i'm wrong but it's an interesting point the guys I think Monsignor Rossetti said this, uh, the guys they look for, right, tend to have a certain profile, right? They tend to be uh, middle-aged or older, right? They tend to be uh, pious men, yeah. but also they have a certain um, scientific, almost engineering precision, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and the reason I remember he said this, it really struck me because it's, <laughs> because at the end of the day, they realize they punch out like Wiley e. Coyote and, you know, the Roadrunner and, and they go have a cigar and a scotch or something or, right. or whatever they're having or a glass of wine and, and they compartmentalize and, and they just realize um, that, you know, they're not afraid because they've got a gorilla behind him. No offense. Uh, right. laughing, but, oh, Jesus Christ, who's about yeah. to open up a can of, uh, you know. And so, yeah, I'm like, I just thought that was really fascinating. And, and it was none of that. These guys speak matter of factly about that. And, yeah. and the whole idea is as they go in, if I'm not mistaken, is they got to find a couple of things. But the, the first thing they got to find is how that guy get in there because you yeah. let him in. Yeah. And that's, a no, that's, a, that, that's not a small point for all of us. Right. We all need to know that, right? This game isn't over, whether it be our children or whatever. Um, I was thinking of another story. Um, a, a poor, uh, I was listening to one of these. And, a young girl was uh, getting attacked at night, you know, same sort of similar that I, I related to. Yeah. And they were like, I don't know, you know, we go to church or whatever. And the priest came over to the house and he goes, you got a son? He's a teenage son. Can I go in his room? Answer. Bingo. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, satanic posters, uh, yeah. you know, in uh, immodest posters of women, mm -hmm. you know, and just kind of going, well, dad <laughs> did, did do you not go in here once in a while <laughs> this is a big shock to you yeah. all right and so you know so uh effectively it was kind of a, the story ended well they waited to the young guy got home he wasn't too far gone thankfully mm -hmm. and they're like you're gonna get all this crap out of your room right you're gonna go to confession <laughs> that kind of thing and you know and they handled it that way and and i think the interesting part about all this information is that um, you scratch deep, and I bet many people listening have had these experiences yeah. with other people. It's not uncommon. Listen, I read, correct me if I'm wrong, um, with respect to Father Amorth uh, in Italy. In the Vatican the Exorcist? Yes, exactly. He was the Vatican Exorcist. He's since passed. That movie's ridiculous, by the way, with Russell Crowe. Just absurd. Yeah, I, heard it wasn't, well, I heard it wasn't good. Yeah, it was, it was absurd. Uh, but with respect to Father Ramorth, I think he died in uh, about 10 years, uh, 10 years ago, maybe. Is that about right? I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't know. But, but I remember right before he, he died, uh, he had spoken to the press. And, and this is, I think, common knowledge in Italy, um, the amount of possessions. And we're not even talking about the obsessions and vexations and all that is up some outrageous amount, like 2000%. And, and why? Okay, well, lots of reasons. For starters, uh, arguably the most Catholic country in the world, Catholicism is being ignored. Oh, we have the Pachamama too, I forgot about that. Not a small point, sorry. Hey guys. Watch, watch, this is what people don't get. Mm. We're going yeah. to brought the Pachamama in. Yes. And once in, as we were discussing earlier, until there's an exorcism of what's going on there, uh, it's still there. The the and watch he out, outlawed individual masses in the Vatican in Saint Peter in Saint Peter's. Remember, I mean, I've been over there on, on several occasions where I would go early, go into the sacristy, and, and a, a server that there's people in there that would help you get vested, and then the server would lead you out to the next available altar. And uh, true story, um, I went out there and I didn't know where all the side altars were. I just, okay, just take me out to whatever altar comes in. And 
walked out and you know this is a cruciform it looked shaped like a cross yeah right yeah. and uh the one that was available was the one off to the left transept right in the center and i walked up to it and it turns out this is the altar of saint joseph who's a patron saint in my diocese and and it was the only one that had a tabernacle i thought there's a tabernacle there i wonder you know it, it's, it's almost like a childish stupid but because something is i wonder if he's in there right because i thought maybe it's empty i, I was it was i wonder so i reached up and i opened the door and it was a tangible whoosh and this is where it really gets silly. I quick slammed it shut because I didn't want him to get away. <laughs> <laughs> that, was my, that was my knee-jerk reaction. Wait, no, stay. Stay here. Uh, but uh, no, the real presence was truly presence. But now, Bergoglio brought in the demon. You know, Father, you, you, do me a favor. I, I got I to gotta highlight this. I didn't think of it in that respect. We, we've just been talking about that theme of um of allowing of the of the head the hierarchy yeah. of the family the allows the it in allow it in. In. And please continue on that thought because it, it, that didn't occur to me i all i was thinking about my simplicity was hey is anyone paying attention to this uh the vicar of christ just venerated an idol in the vatican gardens and in the vatican is promoting yeah. this i'm like is anyone hello is anyone paying attention to this it's what got me into this, by the way, but go ahead. He brought him in. Now, I don't know that anybody, and he's the highest authority there. He's the only one that can get him out and exercise that. And he hasn't done so. As a matter of fact, then he, not only, first of all, he bishops brought in that stupid canoe, right? Right. Remember? And, and there is the Pachamama idol, pagan idol, brought in and set right before St. Peter's altar. And there's this photo op where Bergoglio was there and these, these bishops and maybe a cardinal. Uh, and they take all these pictures of this going on. Now, I, in in two thousand years of Catholic history, there is not one time you've ever seen our Blessed Mother naked, right? No, no. Pachamama is a naked fertility goddess. So then, right? Then they go outside, and it's a nice sunny day, and and they have this little worship service in the, in the Vatican Gardens. And there was at least a couple of these, right? You don't have more than one statue of Mary. Right? There was a couple of these naked women kneeling down pregnant. And you see them all bowing down, including a Franciscan. Yeah. And and there's Bergoglio sitting right there with a couple of his cronies. And they're participating in this worship service. They didn't just bring it in. They worshipped it. Yes. And, and people don't get the evil that has now been allowed in the temple. Now, and, and twice before, that kind of same evil was brought into the temple, right? And what happened? The temple was destroyed. You may hear, hear, hear first. I am not going to be the slightest bit surprised if there isn't a great bit of destruction that's going to go on at St. Peter's, which is unfortunate. You know, remember the temples. Nobody thought anything could ever happen to the temples. Well, the one that Solomon built, the great and glorious temple. Suddenly there's not a stone on it uh, left unturned. Then, then, of course, then they rebuilt it. And then the Romans come in in 70 AD. Because remember, remember what the what the hierarchy incited the Jews to say? The hierarchy themselves said this. Let his blood be on our head and on our children. Well, that was in the year 33. In the year 70, they got their wish because the legions surrounded the town. And there's minimally 600,000 Jews in the town. And I've heard upwards of 1.1 million. Slaughtered man, woman, and child, and then again, not a stone is left on top of another. The temple was destroyed. The very same temple that Jesus was in, the very same temple that he overturned the money changers' tables, the very same temple where Zechariah, John the Baptist, greatest man ever born a woman, went into that behind that secret door where only he could go, and he meets up with the archangel Gabriel, who tells him Elizabeth is going to have a son. I, and, and remember, this has been all these people that this church I was out in Branson here this past weekend. There were 13 extraordinary ministers <laughs> up there in the sanctuary. Remember, Zechariah goes in to the place where only he was allowed to go. And he was in there a really long time. But the other guys, the other priests did not go in because they knew they were not allowed to go in to find yeah. out what was wrong. It, it turns out now that they started uh, like tying a rope around the guy's foot so that should something ha bad happen, they could drag him out. They wouldn't go in and get him like EMTs. They had to drag him out, right? And yet now in our day and age, and I just saw it with my own eyes again, the 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 debacle, the, the the horror show, the freak show that they had down in Branson where you had all these 
extraordinary ministers bringing out chalices of precious blood midway down the church and oh it was so horrible um so bottom so back to the deal here is that Bergoglio brought in the pagan idol the abomination into the yes world. yes so don't be surprised the cataclysm that's going to happen when these core signs of catholic church are destroyed and yeah. what people are going to say is well the faithless, the weak in faith, are going to lose whatever little faith they have uh, because the whole idea is, oh, see, we're establishing a new one world religion. Oh, just be nice. Uh, and we'll let you live whatever gender you choose until the age of 70 when then your utilitarianism, your utility is now gone and now you're just a drag on society. So we're going to give you a pill to make the death easy. Uh, I mean, that, when you look ahead at the, the New World Order movement and the globalist movement and see what they're trying to do, in order to do that, there's one church and one church alone that stands in their way. That's yes. the Catholic Church. So, uh, and, and you know, Osama bin Laden, in case you don't know this, back in uh, 1998, said, don't you people in America understand that your government, run by the Zionists who want to have the One World Order, your government is trying to set up a world war between Christians and Muslims. I, you, you know why? Have we ever discussed this? No, you and I never discussed right. it. No. Wow. Well, this is a this is a huge. We're kind of segueing, I guess, but we started right. talking about. But it all fits with Bergoglio bringing the idol, the abomination in the temple. Back when Solomon's temple was destroyed by the Babylonians, circa five fifty ish BC, uh, they were off into exile, and within about forty years, sounds like forty years in the desert. King Cyrus of Persia conquers the Babylonians and he gives back to the Jews and gives them help too so that they can rebuild his temple, which is the temple that Jesus was in. That temple, the second temple, the one Jesus was in, um, was built directly over the footprint of the first temple, Solomon's temple. Then the Romans came in and destroyed it. So now I'm thinking, what with the Balfour Agreement and what was that, 1919, where for no good reason whatsoever, the prime minister of England says, oh, we ought to set up a whole new state of Israel. Now, Britain at the time, the sun never set on their empire, right? Yeah. And, and they had conquered all these lands and pillaged them of their natural resources. Uh, Israel had no natural resources. Britain had no interest, zero interest in that at all, except that the owners of the Bank of England had a real interest in getting that third temple built. But here's the problem. On about the year 600 and something, I think it was Saladin comes in and conquers Jerusalem. So now we've lost, in the end, we've lost four of the five ancient patriarchies to Islam. Yes. Even only one. That was, you know, God allowed that. So that there's one voice, one truth, one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And you look to one C, which is Rome, St. Peter's. So anyway, uh, Saladin comes in, he conquers Jerusalem, and then he starts building the Dome on the Rock. So one night, I, I it was it was 11, 11 at night. I'll never forget it. I, I typed into Google Images. I said, the Temple Mount, right? This place where the temple used to be. I thought, here it's been all this time. And certainly since, what is it, 1948, Israel's had to reestablish their own nation. Why don't they just build their temple? Well, I, so I thought, where on this dome on the rock or the, where on the, or, or the Temple Mount, are they going to put it? And I looked and all of a sudden it was like, it was like epiphany and scales fell from my eyes because sitting front and center on that temple mount is none other than the dome on the rock, which is an Islamic mosque, which is built there because that allegedly, according to them, is where the angel Gabriel came and got Muhammad, took him up to heaven, brought him back down. They built the, the mosque there. The, it's called the dome on the rock and some very wealthy Arab covered the whole dome with shiny gold literally like gold and uh and now and that's built right over the same footprint as where the first two temples now they cannot have proper worship unless and they haven't had since the year 70 ad unless they have their temple built and the temple has to be built in that same spot well you know this is not gonna this this is a problem this is not gonna go well if they try to construct there yeah yeah so they can't, they even look funny at that. And, you know, Islam goes very volatile in their responses. And, you know, there was a that pastor of a one-off little congregation of, what, 19 down in Florida, or maybe it was maybe a little bit more. It was less than 30. 
Anyway, he says he's going to burn the Quran. This is a, over a decade ago. Oh, also, yeah. There's yeah. these riots in Pakistan, and I think that's where the 19 comes in. I think 19 people died in the riots in Pakistan because some idiot Protestant one-off pastor in Florida decides he's going to burn the Quran. So now if you look, that that is the third holiest site in all of Islam. So you have to have Mecca, Medina, and then the, then Jerusalem, the Dome on the Rock. You, you cannot even look funny at that without riling them, without yes. upsetting them. So, so when Osama bin Laden said, do you not understand they're trying to set this world war between Christians and Muslims, that what's going to happen in that? There will be a decimation, an annihilation of great quantities of Christians and Islam. But collateral damage, you watch that dome on the rock is going to get leveled, right? And, and they're going to, somebody's going to put the false flag out there blaming the Christians, which is going to drive Islam because they're no more educated than anybody else. Yeah, sure. Uh, and they will very easily, like, you know, like the lemmings have followed Fauci, who lied to <laughs> I, I had The lemmings will follow Islam leaders just the same. Sure. So they're going to blame, it's like NBC, CSNBC or CNN. They, they just follow the narrative despite the overwhelming evidence to the contrary. It doesn't matter. They still hammer the people with the same narrative. Because what did Hitler say? What does propaganda say? What does all propaganda say? is tell the big lie often enough and people will just people will believe it. it. That's They'll right. It. So, so you watch something's going to happen there because that dome has to go for Israel to rebuild the temple. And until they do, it's been almost 2000 years. They do not have worship whereby the perfect, the perfect lambs have to be sacrificed by the priests at, sure. the, at the, at the temple. Uh, if you understand the end game, yes, all the little plays that they're making along the way, you connect the dots. And you see yeah. but most people don't even even ponder the end game so uh, there, there you have it there's but the, but the fact I is ask you a question on this yeah, um, I, i've always felt that uh since we're going all over I, I <laughs> no no i love it I, this is really interesting to me. we have yet to get to the topics we thought we were going to get to by the yeah, way yeah we'll, we'll get that next time. Good. <laughs> uh, if if they because I, I think a lot of these, you cannot discount the New World Order, the Davos World Economic Forum guys right now. Right. On the one hand, uh, they don't bother with China because China is a competitor and they're not going to play ball. On the other hand, Russia is nowhere near. Uh, they got to go because Putin is actually transformed into some uh, Orthodox Christian country to a certain extent. Now, your comments about the Middle East, I'm wondering. Are there machinations involved where, as you see it in your opinion, you know, that the Davos folks have their hand in that to light that match? Is that possible? Yeah. So here's here's what well, people that, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist, right? So yeah, except when they come true, but right, I know. exactly. So let me just read a quick quote to you. Sure. Uh, this is from David Rockefeller in his 2002 memoirs. And this is a quote. He said, for more than a century, so we're talking 2000, so we're talking back since before 1902. Yes. Because you saw them take control once, I think it was in the 1800s, they got their hands on the Vatican Bank. But in, in 1907, they had the bank panic that they started by virtue of controlling the media, which caused a run on the banks. And so that gave them the impetus to convince Congress to set up the Federal Reserve. and Nickel Island. Uh, yeah, so, so anyway, so in 2002, David Rockefeller says this, for more than a century, ideological extremists at either end of the political spectrum have seized upon well-publicized incidents such as my encounter with Castro to attack, you know, you're not supposed to be messing, you're not supposed to be encountering Castro. He's a damned communist burning in hell now. Yes, Anyway, to attack, their, so they, they're seizing people with, the, with a brain in their head are seizing upon these well-publicized incidents to attack the Rockefeller family for the inordinate influence they claim we wield over American political and economic institutions. Some even believe we are part of a secret cabal working against the best interests of the United States and characterizing my family and me as internationalists and of conspiring with others around the world 
to build a more integrated global political and economic structure. One world, if you will. If that's the charge, I stand guilty and I am proud of it. <laughs> so in 19 or in 2002, Rockefeller admits in his memoirs, it's so bold now, they don't even try to hide it. No, that's he right. That for the last 100 years, more than that, he and his family and their, you know, the ancestors have been working to destroy the integrity and sovereignty of the United States and make us all part of one world government. Now, what, you know, so you can't believe the news. I don't care if Stephen Fox, you can't believe any of it. No, no, no. We're all too. proclaiming the narrative. But here's what we've got brains. God gave us brains. We have to figure it out. Why is it all anti-Russian hoax? Why the Russian? Because Putin is to Russia what Trump is to America. Yes. They want to make America great again. They want to make Russia great again. And, and that stands in the way. That's right. just, like the, just like the Dome on the Rock Mosque stands in the way of the new temple, Putin and Trump stand in the way of their one world government. That's exactly right. And so that's why they're doing it. And, and they, but what you hear now, oh, China, 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 right? Listen, China's just a useful idiot. And Xi probably doesn't like to hear that. He's got his own arrogance problems but and godlessness. But listen, Nobody in the world is ever going to be subject to China running the world. Because you know what? We don't speak Mandarin. And nobody, we, we barely in America can't speak English. I mean, right. we have so dumbed down the population. But listen, nobody is going to make Mandarin the universal language like English is now. Right. That's, that's the one thing England, you know, England is the source. And the people who run England are the source of all the hell that's in the world today. I, 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 lived, in, I, lived, in China, I lived in China for a while, and, and there's, there's a cultural chasm. There's a monstrous cultural chasm. And even the very nature of China is not offensive. They're, they're, they're defensive, and, uh, and they're, they're, they're more interested in regional hegemony. Is that the word? Yeah, right. yeah. Hege or hegemony, either one. Hegemony, sorry, thank you. Right. And, no, uh, I knew I was, I knew I was reckoning it. But, no, that, was, um, that actually was the perfect word. Yes. I used it well. Yeah, thank you. And, and so, so I'm sitting here going, and I, and I, I agree. I really do, Father. I agree with what you're saying. And but what's fascinating to me is we we have been so dumbed down that no one's paying attention to this. Here's right. a perfect example, just to your point about tinfoil hats and conspiracy yeah. theories. Okay, <clears throat> I just listened to six years of Russia, Russia, Russia. Hunter Biden laptop is fiction. Yeah. The Wuhan virus. You're a racist. Uh, you're, I, I look guys, we're, we're you. And, and again, to your point, CNN, MSNBC, uh, fill in the blank. Even Fox news are a controlled opposition. Yeah. Um, I, I was, I've been traveling, as I said, I'm in Newport, Rhode Island right now in the oh. ocean and, um, my sister's house. And, and I, I, I don't, I, I canceled cable. <laughs> oh, okay. The bottom line is, um, these guys have. Uh, anyone who's not playing ball with these with these powerful figures, very similar to the Rockefellers and 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 that we've seen all along, they have to go. And yeah. uh, I think they're giving China a pass. They're a competitor. And since they don't have global aspirations, they can kind of just go, all right, stay over there. Yeah. But Russia, big problem. Remember the next thing, man? First of all, said we all had to care about we all had to care about COVID, and then Ukraine happened. And we no longer had to care about overnight. Right. Overnight. Overnight, man. Overnight. No, you know, COVID was not important. Grandma's not dying. And, yeah, uh, and, right. and now, now we have to care about hating Russia. And this guy in a yeah. green tracksuit is now the next Winston Churchill. Right. How the hell did that happen? Yeah, but you, you know this. You know that that we find this out with Hunter Biden's laptop. Oh, yeah. In 2014, Obama and the Department of Defense orchestrated a military coup that overthrew the legitimate Ukrainian government. And that's when they installed those 26 or 28 biochem, biowarfare labs, which Russia is not going to allow it on their border any more than we allowed missiles in Cuba. Absolutely. You know how loud we're complaining because China apparently has put up a spy shop down in Cuba and we're all upset about that. But nobody ever talks about the media, the left wing or the right wing. Media. Nobody will talk about the fact that Obama, this, that's why we had to have the Russian. Now that, listen, it, you know, like there's a Pruder film proved a second shooter. 
prove the conspiracy. Yep. Nobody thought that was a gift from God, the Zapruder film, right? Yep. Similarly, Hunter Biden's laptop is manna from heaven because for anybody who will at least have integrity, yes, honesty, when you see the criminal stuff that's going on there, uh, and, and the fact that Obama and the Department of Defense did overthrow the legitimate government and they installed this drag queen puppet, Zelensky, I think his name is, they installed him as the puppet. And what does he do? He puts it in these biochem labs because they knew he can't put it down in North Carolina. That's why uh, Fauci had to transfer the stuff down to Wuhan. And you remember he was in the interview and he said, uh, well, I know China is not doing gain of function down there. <laughs> They're doing it in Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. He said, well, how do you, they, then the, they, said, they said, well, how do you know that, Mr. Fauci? And, and Fauci says, well, because I asked him. And they, they told me they weren't, which is a filthy lie before Congress, because he's the one that transferred the, that stuff in North Carolina down to Wuhan. That's right. Oh, you you know, said, wasn't there, a, I, I despise Netflix, but I believe that there was a documentary on the Ukraine issue done by Netflix exactly about that because the people oh, want democracy. Yeah. They were like, and then all of a sudden, you know, all of a sudden the, you know, the New World Order came in and then all of a sudden this, this guy who was a drag queen comedian became yeah. a statesman. Yeah. What? All of a sudden he's a perfect puppet. He's yeah. an actor, right? He is. So, yeah, you, couldn't, you couldn't write a script for Hollywood like this. You, you could not. Nobody would believe it. And, and back to the Hunter Biden uh, yeah. laptop. And I know, uh, I know, you know, Jack Maxey and, yeah. and, and, and these guys, right? Look, if Jack Maxey were to, come, you know, say everything he knew, we all know this is a, the, the FBI hasn't released this thing. Yeah. It, 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 that's an accident. Well, you know, it takes time to read everything. No right. one cares about its crack habit and proclivity towards hookers okay well this i do when he gets to ride for free on taxpayer expense on the 747 yeah that 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 i care about while he's cutting deals with barisma in the ukraine and and, 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 then, and we have we have actual this is like they're indicting trump you can't yeah. make this up they're indicting trump when we know out there there's there is there is actual physical evidence that part of congress has seen uh, just one part of this right just one part of a five that this is and and i i i'm convinced it's it's a very minor part of what they really start digging and and to your point earlier and we'll probably wrap it up here but it's fascinating because these people are so arrogant they're not even hiding anymore. Right, right. Can I share one thing that shows you the, the level of arrogance and why they don't even they don't even care about this? It's such chunk change. It's small. Ten million dollars to the Joe and, and Hunter for one of their deals. It's just chunk change. So you know, once you are aware, it's like taking the red pill. Once you are aware of what's going on out there, a headline might catch your interest because you'll say, "There's more to this." Oh yeah. There was a four sentence newspaper headline that I saw. And this is what it said. Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase and Company said the U.S. Justice Department was conducting a criminal investigation into its foreign exchange business. The largest U.S. bank also raised the top end of its loss estimates for legal proceedings in excess of reserves established to $5.9 billion from $4.6 billion. So they added $1.3 billion to their loan loss reserves because they were messing around with, you know, Forex, right? Foreign exchange. The next sentence, the investigation focuses on its spot foreign exchange trading activities and controls related to those, the bank said in a regulatory filing. The bank said it was cooperating with the investigation and was in talks with the Justice Department and civil enforcement authorities, but there was no assurance that such discussions will result in settlements. That's what it said. Four sentences, right? That... J.P. Morgan Chase is involved with foreign exchange criminal behavior, and they they set aside 1.3 billion for a settlement. And why is that important? You get, well, keep in mind that's why they think that 10 million to Joe and Hunter is like some chump change. Like sure. why bother, right? But sure. here's here's what's amazing. Since from June of 2010, for the next four years and four months, to when this story came along in November of 2014. So in four years and four months, J.P. Morgan Chase had been involved in 26 different civil and or criminal complaints that resulted in the company paying a total of $28,902,150,000, roughly $29 billion in fines, costs, and reparation for fraud and other criminal activity. And that's just in four years and four months. 
$29 million. And here's the best part. Not one single person. Uh, they would make these settlements such that nobody had to go to jail. Yeah. They had to go to trial. They would just pay out the money. So if they're paying out $29 billion, it's because they're making a heck of a lot more. Correct. Right? And But, but the settlement is so that it did not require them to take, didn't even take requirements uh, to, to take remedial act measures to ensure that the conduct wasn't repeated. They, oh, right. So, oh, they caught me. Okay, I'll pay a billion dollars, but it doesn't matter because it's not their billion, right? No. It's the stockholders' billions that own this. That money should have been paid out in earnings to the stockholders. That's right. That's right. No, look at, can yeah. you imagine 20, uh, um, 26 different civil and criminal complaints? resulting in 29 billion in fines costs and not one single person went to jail. Not one person went to jail. And I don't recall that even making a blip on the financial news right. balance sheets. Right. That So what does that tell you? You know that research I was telling you about that you yeah. and I do? Yeah. So I saw that four cents thing and I thought, well, this needs a little research. <laughs> and that is what I found. Uh, I, I and, and I'll tell you, I, Usually when you, when, when you and I discuss finances, I'm usually up on that, right? Like we were talking the other day. Oh, yeah. Right? You're, listen, I can't hold a candle to you. No, no, no. But I, you caught me on this one because I'm listening very intently and I'm going, I seem to remember that. And But your analysis, and I mean this, is spot on right. Much like it is. And that's not true, Father. I, I've said this to a lot of people. I talk I talk Jekyll Island Central Bank with Father yeah. Rowland. He's one of the few people that understands fractional reserve lending. Yes. He gets yes. all of this, right? Yeah. And uh, the other guy was Bug Hall, actually. Yeah. Hall like, really? Oh, now, dude, look at his background. Look what yeah. Hollywood did to him. Look what, yes, look what Hollywood did to him. And, and, and you're exactly right. But no, and I'm not just saying that. I remember you uh, uh, you were you were late one time. You had a conversation with the guy about Jekyll Island at uh, Fatima. I at think. Fatima. Right. At Fatima. And, and, yeah. uh, and you started, I think it was before I mentioned, and, and you started talking, and I was like, wow, this guy knows what he's talking about. Because no one does. Their eyes glaze over. And that's, yeah, right. what, and that's <laughs> what the new world order counts on. Exactly. Okay. People, pay attention. If there's one thing you could take away from this, besides the exorcist conversation, which is quite interesting. But yeah. <laughs> but if you, the, here's the thing. Um, if I can't explain something to you simply, that means I'm either lying, I don't know what I'm doing, or I'm full of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, right. I should be able to explain to, uh, you know, a 16 year old person how the Federal Reserve works, actually. And if you don't now, what happens is the entire industry springs up. So everyone will be afraid of it. They're intimidated by the jargon and the esoteric terms. Yeah. And this is how this all gets done. Yep. And it's not that complicated. So I tell you, my spiritual advisor from 20 years ago before I entered seminary. He said back then, and he knew what he was talking about in a profound way, uh, that they're trying to dumb us down and they're using sex as the means to do so in sports. It's the bread and circuses, right? The yes, bread and circus, right. So what did I see on TV yesterday? Nothing about this kind of stuff. Nothing about truly what's going on on that. Right now. But instead, it was just constant, 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 every minute detail of Trump having to go answer to this trumped up, sorry, that was accidental, yeah, uh, well, was charges by this loser who's like that. And now we're going to get stuck listening to this. It's all this attention is diverted to this nonsense while they go about doing exactly what David Rockefeller said they were doing in 2002 for the last 100 plus years. You know, that 100 years is an accident, by the way. What did... Pope Leo XIII's vision say, Satan says, I need a hundred. Yeah, years. I need a hundred years. A lot more power. Oh, gosh, that's perfect. And he's got I, it. I, Father, what year was that? It was like, was, oh, 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 here you go. Go. The vision was on October 13th, 1884. Exactly 33 years to the day of the Fatima miracle of the sun. 33 Whoa. years to the day. That is not coincidental. Whoa, that is not coincidence. No, October 13th, 1884 to October 13th, 1917. 33 years to the day when our Blessed Mother warned us about the Russian air and all that that encompassed in that, you know, in Fatima. Uh, Holy cow. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's uh, all of this stuff. Look, and, and look, we started out 
if you don't mind, uh, you have to go too far. I do. Home. Gosh, I've got like 15 minutes. To, I have to eat. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, you gotta eat up. Yeah. Oh, boy. That would be good. But uh, real quick, we started out with um, that story uh, I told you was relevant. We went into the importance of spiritual warfare and yeah. staying in the state of grace. Yes. And, we wrapped it, and Father, you wrapped it up beautifully because I, I guess the final word I would say is people pay attention. Um, we're heading into something. Yeah. It's coming and it's coming quickly. It's coming and coming quickly. Um, yeah. and, and, and if I could, I'm going to embarrass you again because 30 yeah. seconds. Father Altman, you guys, if you know him, you cannot believe this man's schedule. And he always answers Serbia. And and and, uh, and Father, God bless you. It's an honor to know you, man. Honor to know you too. And I hope I hope God's providence has our paths cross in person pretty soon because it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while, Father. Uh, we'll go shooting. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, the, you're ever in Florida, the ammo's on me. Now I'm in Newport, Rhode Island right now, but you got okay. it. Anyway, Father, right. you're the best, man. A lot of people love you. So we will be you all better. Right. You all. We'll talk soon. And we'll close it out with a prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. If you don't mind, Father, I'll, I'll leave with a Hail Please. Mary. Please. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Victory. Pray for us. Father, Son, and Spirit of Man. Thank you, Father, and God bless. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye. Great. We'll talk to you soon. Okay.